Hello and welcome to what would have been the NEC Classic Car Restoration Show sponsored by Practical Classics I think it is and uh, this is JCT's fascinating hobbies in conjunction with Modern Classic Executive Cars which is a group that I help run over on Facebook. Now what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be taking this XJ40 Ski Slope and Ashtray which are from my XJ40. We're going to be removing as much as I can uh, the lacquer here that seems to be sort of varnish, it seems to be peeling off. We're then going to be sanding down the uh, veneer with some 320 grit to um, give us a nice smooth surface on which to apply this Rustin's plastic coating. Now from what I can ascertain and from what I've read, if you have a vehicle that's produced after a certain year, the type of varnish you have is, I think, sort of a polymer-based or plastic-based coating. And because the XJ40 that I own was made in and around 1987, uh, November or so, I would say that I sort of probably fall within that, uh, that sort of area. Now, thankfully, the lacquer varnish, or whatever you want to call it itself, is coming off. However, the veneer, uh, which would be this sort of wood, very thin sort of wood layer here, doesn't seem to be coming off at any point. I am a bit concerned about this area here, but we shall see what that holds. So, let's take out, I think I've got one here. Let's take out one of these razor blades. Now, they're actually a lot thinner than I thought they would be. Need to be really careful with these because they are obviously quite sharp. And what we can do with them is we can actually slide underneath the parts which are coming off and literally just scrape away the varnish that is coming away. What I'm aiming for is a point where it won't slide under any more. Now, I've never done anything like this before. Obviously I've worked with wood and I've painted a few things in my time, made a few woodwork projects in my time, but I've never actually done any kind of renovation of this sort of nature. And what I'm hoping to be able to achieve is a reasonable finish that I can put back into the interior of my car which will look not totally horrendous, let's say. So what I would imagine is I would remove this as far as I can. As you can see here, that doesn't seem to be going any further. So it's probably just confined to these sort of very edges. If I can get these removed, what I should then be able to do is using some of that sandpaper, sand down this edge here then apply some of the new coating to just patch in this little area here. Ideally I'd want to strip off the whole lot but that might be easier said than done. Let's see how far we get because that has actually gone right into there really well. So it would be interesting to see how much of this actually comes off. The car itself has been sat over the years, uh, since about 2003 onwards, it has been living mostly in garages with the occasional bit of summer use. This has meant that the uh, ski slope woodwork has actually lasted a lot longer than a lot of other contemporary XJ40s. So XJ40s of this sort of era were not, let's be honest, built particularly well or from the highest quality materials. Mechanically they were pretty good, in fact very good to be honest with you, it was one of the best parts of the car was the uh, the engine and transmission, certainly on the 3.6s. The interiors were, were lovely and certainly in the case of mine, um, areas such as the leather and other sort of parts of the interior have lasted very well, but there are elements such as the wood trim certainly on the ski slope, which has not lasted quite as well as you would hope. 
Um, it seems to be indicative of all XJ 40s, all certainly all early XJ 40s, uh, from around sort of eighty six through to late eighty nine, I'd say. When the uh, the four liters came out, they were actually a lot better, and uh, you sort of saw certainly from 3.6s up to 4 litres, a sudden jump in quality. Oh, that's actually going a little bit too far there. You can actually see there that has actually gone and snagged a bit of the actual veneer, which I don't want to do. So I just want to keep it to just getting as far as possible the varnish. Frankly, these aren't as sharp as I thought they would be. They're thin enough to get underneath, but they're not sharp enough to cause too much damage. However, be careful handling them, and uh, don't be like me and just do it with your hands. Possibly wear a pair of gloves or some other similar protective hand related equipment. So that's actually brought that up quite a bit there and we've got a little bit down here that looks like it's come up. I'm interested to see how far this goes. You can see it's actually bubbled around here. It would be very interesting to see how far we actually go. You can see there is the, actual, the natural join of the veneer itself. So this was obviously done in two halves when it was produced. All those years ago and to be honest this hasn't lasted badly for 33 years that's actually lasted very well from what I've been reading if you have um, actual problems with the veneer itself you can buy uh, pieces of veneer that you can cut to size and reapply to any sort of wood trim that you happen to be overhauling. However, in this case, the veneer looks largely unaffected, which I'm really pleased about, to be honest. I'm hoping that, as I said earlier, I should be able to get away with a bit of a varnish. And um, a little bit of uh, extreme polishing. So let's go and a bit further. For polishing, what I've from what I've been reading, you start off using something like G3. Ow. See, that's why you've got to be so careful with those. Ow, that's really quite ow. Again, there's a reason why you should be wearing PPE for your hands. Unlike me, who isn't, and it's just gonna continue along anyway. Don't be like me, be safe. So, what was I saying? Yes. I completely forgot what I was saying, actually. So that's thrown me a little bit. Um, yeah, so what you would do is you would use a bit of G3 and you would machine polish. So I'm just going to use a drill with uh, some buffs and you would polish using the G3 initially then you would use some more conventional wood polish uh, for a sort of a more sort of lasting final approach and final sort of finish there we go so that's taken away that and let's come down oh dear that's yeah that really has <laughs> come up a treat actually that little cut let's move that out of the way I don't want to get blood on my veneer that would be uh, a new interesting kind of accident. So you would then use the G3 to polish the surface and um, that should actually sort of bring things up really well and then you would obviously just use some more conventional polishes to finish. As we can see that is actually coming away quite nicely. And obviously there will be points where I can't go any further, 
and once I hit those points I'm not going to go any further because there isn't really any point in stripping all of this away if the majority of the lacquer is actually okay or varnish or whatever you want to call it. It's a bit bare you can see it's sort of blistering all the way around but I'm hoping that bit of black there is actually from the um, gear shifts around. Uh, I'm actually hoping that um, what I'm doing here, when I come to polish it, I can actually polish out a lot of these imperfections. Polishing in itself may actually uncover um, more sort of problems such as this. Another thing you have to be careful of is, as you can see, it is flicking everywhere. So make sure that you do this. And if possible, and if you need to, wear eye protection because you don't want this really going into your eye. So the pieces that are coming off are actually surprisingly sharp. Also, don't dig in too deeply with the razor blade because you will very likely disturb the actual veneer itself. So what I'm trying to do is to keep it as flat as possible like so, and just gently chip away at this coating. And oh, there we go. Should there we go. If in doubt, ping it off like that. So I seem to just get blood everywhere, which is lovely. So some of these areas are darker than others. So generally, if they're darker probably means that the um, veneer itself is not actually lifting. There's a little corner here where I can see it's lifting ever so, ever so slightly. It does seem to be, as you can see, sort of confined along the edges. And obviously what's happened is moisture over the years gets underneath this varnish and gradually erodes away the varnish's ability to um, remain adhered to the veneer, obviously. So, there we go, a little bit more. There. Just a little bit more there. And if we come down here, really trying to get this bit on the edge here because that is blatantly lifting if you can see it but it's not lifting enough to really affect how this comes across there we go yeah. right that's the major bulk of it now, what we're probably going to do is put that to one side, clear this area a little bit, and I'm going to take a slightly more cavalier approach to this. I'm going to start off with a 120 grade sand. Actually, no, sorry, I've got some 180 grade here. 180 grade sand now. Focusing more on the existing veneer, rather, sorry, more on the existing varnish, rather than the veneer itself. So, I think I've got enough flex on this. And for this particular job, I'm going to be using this sort of mouse type thing. So this is one of the luxuries at the NEC, I wouldn't have the luxury of being able to use electrical equipment. However here, because I'm at home, 
I can utilise the electrical equipment to my heart's content. Right, here we go. So, let's see how this goes. It's actually gone surprisingly well. So it's bed in some of this veneer, uh, sorry, lacquer. And it seems to actually sort of smooth that out quite nicely. So let's do this top piece here. There we go. A oh, little bit there. There we go. And as we can see we still have the veneer. And we now have quite a nice little piece of sanded down wood. Complete with the veneer and other features which we still want to maintain. So I'm going to use some of this 320 grit now just to try and smooth this out a little bit so let's grab out a bit of 320 so I'll fold that in half half again and in half again enough pretty good and perfect ish right so let's see what this does up quite nicely so I'm focusing on where we're still varnished and what that does seem to be doing quite successfully is just clearing up some of those scratches that I had on there from when I gave it the real brutal sanding as you can see here and also on here as well so let's do this bit Try and keep the same direction for travel. I don't want to go too mad because I don't want to um, compromise the veneer that's already there. There we go, a little bit there. And. So, it's actually a bit dull at the minute because we've obviously sanded away a lot of the actual finish, which is what we want. So we want to get this as clean as possible. So I'm going to go and fetch some cleaning fluids, some cloths, and we're going to see what we can do to get this cleaned up a little bit, ready for varnishing. So I've got some isopropyl alcohol, 99.9%, 500 millilitres. Apparently it's uh, laboratory tasted without colourants and fragrances. That's nice. So let's get this open. Keep away from pets, animals, alcoholics, etc.
Right. Oh dear, that didn't go quite to plan. Actually, that did go very to plan because look at what it's doing. Let's bring it back that quite nicely. So you can see, let's go clean this up generally. There we are. That's giving it a nice clean there. Uh, looking good. Not bad at all. There we go. So that's nicely cleaned up. However, we are not quite ready yet to start even thinking about applying any kind of varnishy top sort of goodness because we still need to get back um, a little bit more of that veneer so oh sorry a little bit more of this um oh, i've completely forgotten lacquer so i want to try and get rid of mu as much of that as possible to take us back to this bare veneer that you can see here in fact, you've got to be careful because you can see what's happening at the edge. I've over sanded ever so slightly at the edge and it's going back down to the metal under frame that um, the lacquer has been put on top of, it would seem. So it's actually on this frame sort of here, which I thought was plastic. In fact, I think it is plastic, but it might be sort of to maintain the shape more rigidly and stop it um, sort of losing shape over the years a very thin piece of metal that the veneer goes on to so that the ski slope remains its shape even in intense heat situations. So that actually looks pretty good. I'm actually quite pleased with how that's coming out so far. I want to get um, a little bit of probably 1200 grade wet and dry onto that. Probably to give it a dry sand because I don't want to get water on there um, for obvious reasons. So what we'll do is we'll actually go out in a moment and fetch a bit of 1200 grade. What we're going to do now is give the work area a clean up. So as you can see it has generated quite a lot of dust and rather than uh, obviously have that dust causing us problems forevermore when we come to um, start painting this what I'm going to do is fetch the vacuum cleaner and give it a little bit of a clean up. So we're giving the workspace a bit of a clean up. Uh, I've popped out and I've grabbed my one of my tubes of G3 and I've also got a bit of 1500 grade wet and dry. Got more of this but um, I want to uh, cons um, keep as much as I can back for later so I'm not going to do a wet sand I'm going to see how a dry sand comes out and that seems to be okay actually I'm quite impressed with that that's not bad at all coming out quite nicely And uh, as I will stress and keep stressing, no, I am not an expert. Yes, it might actually end up looking terrible, but I wanted to give this a go before investing in a good second-hand item, because this is, as far as I know, the ski slope that came with the car. So it would be nice to uh, keep it in good shape. There, there we go. Let's see how that looks. It's looking... Actually, yeah, that's 
got rid of those quite deep scratches that I had from the 180 grade um, 180 grade power sand in it I gave this. So that's actually done a nice job with that. That's brought those back quite pleasantly. Wow. It's quite interesting that it sort of actually leaves that sort of like a clear coat surface from this all over that. And because it's so thin, you don't necessarily need to do too much in the way of um, machine sanding. The initial 180 grade sand over was to basically thin out this varnish layer, and that's actually done the job perfectly. So, let's grab a bit more isopropyl. Isopropanol, rather. Obviously use this stuff in a well ventilated area, have any windows etc open, make sure children, animals, spouses etc are not close by when using this. So do make sure that you do use these chemicals in a nice open plan area, well ventilated. Now, that actually seems to be doing the business. That's actually looking pretty good. You can actually see in the corner here where I've over sanded that it has actually taken away some of the veneer. Little trick that I read online if you have a suitably coloured Sharpie or similar permanent pen, other permanent markers are available. You can touch up these edges post work with said pen. There we go. Actually, rather pleased with that. That's looking pretty good. I'd say we're probably about ready. Now, let's have a look at this stuff. So apparently it is, it is a plastic coating, it comes with this instruction book and it comes with this hardener. So it will apparently resist heat, impact, alcohol and solvent resistant. It's fast drying for wood and cork. This is the hardener. Standard ratio looks like one part per volume with four parts of that. I would hope that this... What's this? Is this the instructions or is this just a brochure? Ah, it looks like a brochure. That's good. So we've got the application. We're going to be using a the brush. There's our instructions. How to mix. We're going to use some tubs that I've bought specially for the job. So before use, oh sorry, before use the plastic coat, oh so before use the plastic coating must be mixed well with the hardener in a glass, polythene or enamel container. Do not use a metal container except the cup of a spray gun as it will react with the hardener and the coating will not dry. The amount of hardener is supplied the plastic coating and it is important to keep the same proportions when mixing um, only part of the coating. For example, if using half the contents of the bottle of plastic coating then use half of the hardener. The correct ratio of hardener to plastic coating is 1 to 4 by volume. Once mixed, the coating will harden in two to three days in an open container. Only mix sufficient amount for the work to for in hand and do not pour any left uh, over mixture back into the bottles. Once the plastic coating is dry, it cannot be dissolved and the brushes used for the application must be cleaned in thinners immediately after use. So we do have some um, 
We do have some paint cleaner, which is useful. So, Rustin's uh, plastic coating reaches maximum heat and solvents resistance after five to seven days. During the first few days, therefore, avoid spilling solvents or putting hot plates or cups onto the surface. Well, that's not going to happen with this because it's not really the type of surface that you would put hot plates and cups on given that it's going to be going into a car. However, it won't be going into the car for another week or so, so it's going to be fine where it is. We will give this another wipe over with the, uh, with the isopropyl, focusing on these exposed areas because I want to get rid of any ingrained bits of varnish that may have gotten into the veneer itself. Let's come up quite nicely. Right, let's go and get some suitable brushes and containers. So I'm going to be using these new brushes. Um, absolutely brand spanking new. Uh, for a pack of five in varying different sizes, these actually set me back of around five or six quid, I can't remember. Um, however, that's pretty cheap, so I actually bought two sets um, in case I destroy the first set. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off measuring out the a small quantity of this. So probably on here, going to go up to probably about there, so we would need approximately probably that much hardener, at a guess. Now, this will be interesting. Ideally, I should be measuring this out with a measuring jug. In fact, let's do just that. So, after some negotiation with uh, the rest of the family, I've got this one where the markings are pretty much gone. However, for the purpose of this, it should be fine. So, I'm going to fill up to... So, we've got 50... 100, 150, 200, 250, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4 sets of 50. So we'll go up to 250 with this, so it is 4 parts of this, so that will be our 250. So let's measure to 250 and 250. There we go. And then we need one part of this one. So that's 50, 100, 150, 200, 250. That's actually five parts I've put in. I knew I got my maths incorrect somewhere. So for that, five parts, 75 millilitres of this. So that will take us up to about... That's going everywhere. There. God, you cannot take me anywhere. Right. Get a brush and mix it all together. It's like cooking with chemicals. There we go. And to mix it even further and pour it into this container. There we go. 
Move that to one side. Bring the ski slope over. And let's start applying this and see how it goes on. Never done this before with something that's, um, as intricate as this. So it would be interesting to see how it goes on. There's the possibility I might need a few coats of this. Uh, looking at it, ideally I should have tried to remove all of the existing varnishes. I'm not sure this is going to go on very well. However, I'm hoping that if I build up with different coats, I would hope that I'll be able to alleviate some of these after effects. But it'd be interesting just to see how this goes in. So I'm not actually going to really pay attention to following the plan. I'll try and follow it as much as possible, like so. There we go. Actually, that does give quite a pleasing effect. Where I've um, left the existing varnish in place, it is actually giving me quite a pleasing effect. And it sort of adds to the uh, overall veneer. However, if you're going to do this properly, you would remove all of the veneer. However, I'm hoping that I can, as I say, get rid of uh, some of this with a lot of polishing and a few more coats of this. But I'm actually quite pleased with how that's come out because it's added, it's actually added to the overall effect of the um, the ski slope because you've got these sort of nice dark areas here and you've got obviously the existing darkness there coming around to a lighter area here and then you've got lighter areas where we were sanding and that does actually look pretty good it's not perfect but it will go into the car quite nicely it does actually sort of seem to go on with this very sort of orange peel sort of finish especially if you're uh, doing it with a brush like I am um, as I say, it is not perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. I'm actually really pleased with that. I don't know why I should be saying, my god, this looks terrible. But the more I look at it, the more I am actually genuinely pleased with it. It's um, not bad at all. The reason why I was being careful with this is because, obviously, this veneer is really thin. And... The last thing I want to do is um, remove the um, the actual veneer coat because I don't have any suitable veneer replacements or pieces of veneer to put back down. So I've gone for this sort of halfway house approach of applying or removing as much of the old varnish as I can safely without damaging the existing veneer coat because that would not be good if I were to lose said veneer coat and I'm not going to be overly careful with this because I can polish this up later to a nice finish. I want to avoid any um, sort of bits of it where it, where it might sort of pull. However, on the whole, that is looking nice. 
it'd be interesting to see how it dries as well, if it actually dries and um, removes some of these sort of rather worrying after effects. Which I'm actually not too concerned about. I'm, I really like this. One thing, if you are using this stuff, it does have quite a high, um, uh, what do they call it? Quite a high volurific content, something like that. It's a bit like um, gloss paint. So you might want to be a little bit careful. And again, only apply this in a well ventilated area. And I'm just adding gently to the coat that I've already got down. I'm just building on the uh, initial shine that I already have going on. Now going up and over. And around, there we go. And down. So, with all these uh, solvent smells floating around, I would like to see COVID 19 have a good go at coming in here. I think it would get in here and think, flipping out, what a lot of solvent type smells. I'm not coming here because what's the point? This guy has isopropyl everywhere and he's using these um, lovely chemicals. And there we go. I think that will do. So it would be interesting to see how this dries. So I'm actually going to leave this now because it needs to dry. The final step will be to first off use the G3 to polish it and once that's done a bit of a standard sort of wood polish to finish and then we can fit it back into the car but for now there are a few sort of blotchy bits on that sort of bit where it is on the vertical. I'm going to leave this now and let this dry out and see how it looks when it's dry. It's actually not looking too bad at the moment. Yeah, quite pleased with it. Anyway, that's that. If you have found this interesting, don't forget to hit the like button and don't forget to consider subscribing. Hit the notification bell and do all the other things that the popular YouTube people tell you to do. But thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Hello and just wanted to provide you with a quick update of how things went as regards the XJ40 ski slope. So I had to in the end apply many coats of varnish to actually get it to this level. Um, what's going to happen now is I'm going to leave this to dry probably for about uh, a week or so. Then I will give it a machine polish to sort of remove some of the imperfections and um, sort of raised lumps in the varnish and hopefully restore a nice bit of shine as well. I'm really pleased with how this came out. It's um, You can still see underneath the sort of lighter areas are where the old lacquer uh, was left and you can see sort of a bit of a rough sort of transition between um, the varnish and the actual veneer but overall I'm quite pleased with how this has come out it certainly looks better than it did with loads of flaking veneer um, sorry varnish rather if you're going to do this properly you do need to remove all of the varnish that's every single last piece of it 
and you do need to prep it far more than I did. I mean, this is literally a job which probably an all took a few hours to do. Uh, if you're going to do it properly, you need to remove everything. I'm actually really pleased of how it's come out. It's sort of given this sort of nice, sort of nicely aged effect, uh, which would sort of suit the interior of the car quite nicely. And overall, I am sort of rather pleased with uh, the results that I've managed to achieve with very limited skill and um, not necessarily limited resource, but more sort of limited skill, to be honest with you. This is my first attempt at sort of doing anything like this, and I am. I've got to be honest, I am really pleased with how it's come out. You can see there a little high point there. You can see that sort of bobble there. What I'm hoping will happen is once this has dried, I'll be able to sort of polish that out using a bit of the G3. This particular area here is pretty hard to get varnish onto. You can see there that there is a bit of a run. Again, I'm hoping that with... Um, you can also see this sort of hasn't gone on quite as well as it should but I'm actually hoping again with a bit of a polish that will come out quite nicely anyway once again if you have found this interesting don't forget to hit the like button don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time mm -hmm.